Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, how about this set of topics? Liquor store sales, shell refinery tax, or tax break, payday lending, unemployment compensation, and guess who our special guest is? The governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett, and we'll be back in a moment. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back. Well, joining me is, I often, can't say often is the case, but fairly frequently. And, and it's something, wait a minute, Governor of the Commonwealth and sometime host of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. You Absolutely. You got, are we doing yeah, that again yes, this summer? Yes, we are. Okay. Now, now maybe uh, I'm covering both conventions, you know, media coverage. Um, and I know well, we should have some fun down yeah. in Tampa. Well, but what I'm thinking of is if you're not away when the Democratic convention is, oh, maybe you do it that week. That's, we'll check. That, we'll get the schedule checked, and we'll see what we'll do I haven't that. checked when their uh, convention well, is. Well, they're right after. Know. Yeah, yeah. Let they're us right know so we get it yours. on the schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, I have to, I had Rob McCord, I have to have a D and an R. I can't have the state treasurer because he's running for re-election. I can't go near there. All right, Governor, let's get started. Look, uh, the majority leader, Mike Terzai, is pushing uh, the privatization of the state stores, as I think everybody in the state by now knows, had some little trouble in the House getting it moving. But you made some pretty striking comments this week. You said, you, you were like Texas Hold'em, all or nothing. You said, I want it all done, the complete package, not just, you know, privatized wine. Talk about that. What well, you absolutely. I mean, there, were, there, were, there were two packages that have yeah. been discussed. One package was all of it. The other package right. was privatized wine and leave uh, liquor, hard liquor, in the state sewer system. No. Doesn't make much uh, no, sense. No, it doesn't make any sense to me. This, this yeah. is not an easy thing to get done. A lot of people think it's really easy. Easy? Uh, well, they believe that it's the only people that are opposed to it are the union people uh, that would be affected by it. And I certainly understand their position. I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think we need to do it. But there are also uh, many different interests out there who do not want to see the status quo uh, changed uh, or who want to have uh, a great deal of input in, in how right. we change it. So. Uh, there's discussions going on um, as we speak. Uh, I was, uh, as we speak earlier in the day, I had mm -hmm. conversations with uh, the majority leader. Uh, we'll see. And we'd, I'd like to yeah. see it get done before they break for the summer. Yeah. But if it doesn't get done before then, we'll come back in September. There's no backing away from this. And, you know, if, as I said before, if for some right. reason we don't get it done, we'll come back We're next year two, and continue. Only two states have, have their retail and wholesale operations still in the private sector right. some states like virginia wholesales out you know public you know licenses right. to businesses i think wholesale still owned by the state is that a compromise that you find acceptable or you as i said you're all in I, for the whole I, package I, I, right we need to be out of the business of selling alcohol all right okay the, the private sector does it better we should get out of the business we should get the revenue from it you know, we shouldn't do something that's going to make us lose revenue, right. obviously, but we should get the, the revenue for it yeah. and let the private sector take over. And you're confident that that, you know, there is some controversy over whether that would give more money than what the current operation gives us. You're confident that that, will, that would take place? I'm confident that that would take place, okay. so we, that we would you know, not lose in this overall All right. picture. Uh, let's now turn to uh, the proposed Shell refinery tax break. I mean, let, let me set the stage for this. There's a, the Shell Oil Company wants to build a, what's called a cracker company that they take ethane and turn it into ethylene. Gosh, I, I'm getting well, into Well, first they take natural gas, gas into ethane. That's correct. And that gets turned into ethylene. ethylene. And, then and they, ethylene becomes plastic. See, the governor knows what he's talking I, about I, here. Let, you let, let organic let me, chemistry now, governor? No, no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> All but right. What, what, we, what we need to do, is, what, what this is an effort is to bring manufacturing back right. to Pennsylvania. The one thing I hear out on the road constantly is uh, that this country has sent manufacturing overseas, that the state has gotten rid of manufacturing. This is the opportunity to bring manufacturing back to the United States and bring it back to Pennsylvania. Most of these facilities, these cracker facilities, in fact, uh, I think almost all of them, are located down in the Gulf Coast. And Shell, because they have a huge amount of the uh, natural gas uh, field in western Pennsylvania where the, the wet gas is, wants to build one here. In Beaver that, County, in right. In Beaver County. Okay, mm -hmm. that's where they've designated. Uh, 5,000 jobs 
uh, 10,000 jobs uh, at any one time, sometimes 10,000 jobs or 5,000 jobs, clearly for three years just to build it. You know, hundreds of jobs afterwards to operate it. But then there are all of the uh, indirect and what they call induced jobs that, that come from that. Mm -hmm. Well, once you have that ethylene, what are you going to do with it? If you send it to the plastic plants outside of Pennsylvania, uh, in this in this tax break uh, that we or this tax plan that is going forward, if you send it out there, you get no credit. Right. If it goes within the state of Pennsylvania, it gets a credit. So the tax credit, we're going to have to run to a break, but the tax credit applies only if it stays in the state. Is that your point? Only if it stays within the All state. All right. Now one other, one which other means thing, look, additional Rindell, construction. Look, your predecessor gave whatever the amount is. I'll be wrong about this. Thirty or fifty million to. Harley Davidson to stay in the state, maybe more. There was money given to Comcast, money given to uh, uh, Boscoffs. The, the one concern that I hear expressed by people is not that, but maybe the 1.7 billion over 25 years is too much. When we come back, we'll let the governor okay. respond to that, and we'll get into some other subjects. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by BetterSaferRoads.com. To voice your support for safer highways and less traffic congestion, visit BetterSaferRoads.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program with my special guest, the governor uh, of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett. We're talking about this proposed shell refinery tax break. The governor's giving us his rationale. Now, your predecessor, Governor Rendell, gave money to Harley Davidson, to Comcast, to Boscoffs, and countless hundreds of millions for Stadia you know, uh, the whole keep the ball teams in the state, understandably. The one criticism that I've heard is 1.7 billion over 25 years doesn't start, wouldn't kick into 2017 is too much. How do you respond to For, that? First off, number one, there is no tax credit if they don't build the plants. Okay. Okay. So what it is, is you build the plants, you bring the jobs here, you build the plants that will continue to have the operating jobs for a long period of time, then you can get a credit as long as you use the gasoline here or the, the natural gas here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So it is a job generator. It is performance based. I got it. And if you take a look at that number over the 25 years, it's about 60 million. Okay, one of the tax credits that we have out there right now is, a, I think, 65 million, or might be 60 million, for the film tax credit to right. keep the. Oh, it's the 75 end. million, I think. Okay, no, I think it can actually oh, keep did they, anyhow, did it come down, you, whatever it is. Yeah, well, originally it was 75. We're, 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 in, the, we're in the same I get ballpark. It. I get it. And that's to keep jobs here. This totally creates all new so jobs. So your point would be this would actually create more jobs than the film industry, which comes and goes. They'll be here. That's exactly right. Because and there's competition for this from other states? Oh, there is. Well, first off, the competition is, we'll just send the natural gas down to the, the Gulf Coast right. and use the facilities down there, because that, that could happen. Mm -hmm. So what this is, is create the industry here. There's I competition from Ohio and West Virginia that would mm -hmm. love to have gotten this facility over there. With this tax credit, if a company would come in and build a petrochemical plant that would develop the plastic, if they build it in Ohio, mm -hmm. they send the gas over there, they don't get the credit. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm trying to get through a bunch of topics. Uh, let's talk about payday lending. A bill passed the House 102 to 90, pretty much along party line vote that would regulate the payday lending industry, creates an interest ceiling 12.5% uh, for two weeks. If you, That annual rate would be well over 300%. It's not, I guess, regulated now. I'm not. The only thing I know is that everything I know about payday lending is no good. So here's the question for you, Governor. Is this protection for the consumer or is this just exploitation because of the I think, now, I you're think, a former now wait a minute uh, in your former job you had to deal with this didn't you well, we, we <laughs> did and i think what happens is really in the eye of the beholder yeah. uh on this one these, this is not an easy area people get into short uh, uh times where they don't have the money they need to get it uh, very quickly when you don't have any regulation there's nothing for the regulators yeah. to do to help 
So it, it at least provides some rules and regulations that have to be followed. Uh, so, you know, it's probably a half little, a loaf, not a whole yeah, loaf. Yeah, I, I get it. You're, I mean, I must tell you, we, we have one of our underwriters now it's, is the Credit Union Association. You know, they a right. lot of folks it, work for you <laughs> are in the association and banks. I'm, and, I'm know, in the credit union. Yeah, there you go. They have some, obviously they have their own program, but man, over the years they've not been happy about the usurious interest rates right. and the manipulation. And it is a tough it is a tough thing. I guess the host, I'm not supposed to keep my mouth shut, but I guess it's not something I'd be terribly terribly. You're not known for being able to do that. No, no, I know, I know. <laughs> but I get your point. So you're kinda if if you got the bill, would you sign it? Or would you want to look well, at we it? have to look at the final bill. Okay. You I know, knew you because were somehow I knew you were going to say that, right? You know until you see it, yeah, you have to take a look at it. It, it passed the All house, right. it's over in the Senate, we'll see what the Senate yeah, does. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens over there. All right. Next topic. You and the you and the uh, Supreme Court justices, mainly one judge, uh, the judge, the Chief Justice Castillo, had a little different view about the judgeships in the state. You recently sent, if I got this right, seven judges over to the nominations for judgeships over to the Senate. Uh, I won't get into the details of it. I guess two in Allegheny County, a bunch in Philly, and one in York. The Chief Justice says. Governor Corbett, pay for them or don't appoint, appoint them. And you were, guys are having a little back and forth on that. What's, what, well, why, did you, well, first of all, why did you nominate them? Well, be, because, uh, one, uh, I have a belief that the people that we have nominated will, will make good judges, and there are vacancies there. Uh, there were certainly requests to, uh, to fill those positions. And, in fact, um, I decided I wanted to fill a position in Allegheny County uh, mm -hmm. with my chief of staff, who's sure. going to make a, a wonderful judge. Uh, number two, uh, I have reminded the uh, Chief Justice a couple times publicly that this is a decision of the, the executive branch uh, and it is decided upon by the uh, Senate is to confirm sure, or, or not confirm to confirm. Not, so that, yeah, that falls yeah. in our bailiwick. And um, I believe, you know, we're working on the budget as we speak. Yeah. Can you find a uh, 1.7 million? That's what the papers have said. Well, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to agree with that okay. number, but I think, okay. you know, it is incumbent right. upon us to find now, some And there money. is judicial backlogs. I mean, I keep reading in some cases about, go ahead. You know, each, each, count, each county each is different. Each county is different. It really is. It comes down to the management of the county. I got it. Uh, you know, civil cases are changing a little bit. They're, they're not yeah, getting quite yeah. as backed up. But because you're confident of, that th these were judicial appointments that you thought were necessary. Senate confirms them. Absolutely. Well, I, I can tell you one right off the, head, uh, off the top of my head. There's a vacancy in York County to the death of a, of a judge a few right. months ago. Right. Uh, York County doesn't have that many judges. Clearly, we need to fill that York County position. All right. We're going to run to a break. Uh, the uh, governor's recently implemented some unemployment compensation reforms the state owes. Uh, we won't get into this. Some like $4 billion to the federal government. Talk with the governor about how, how he and the legislature are working on that when we come back. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. We're going through, I'll tell you what, the state has a huge number of items as the governor and I were chatting on this agenda. Uh, governor, I don't, I, you know, we've always had a lot of things to do, big policy things to do. But I'm telling you, they've all backed up over, what, six, maybe ten years, school reform, uh, s liquor store sales. Now we got fracking in Marcella Shale. Uh, budget deficit budget, of four point two yeah. billion. Yeah, the reason I have a city of Harrisburg yeah, bankruptcy or close uh, to bankruptcy. Unemployment compensation. Yeah. Now, the reason I haven't gotten into the budget with you is that we're, as we tape this, we don't know what will happen. That's exactly but, right. All right, I want to talk about. We owe the federal government close to four billion dollars. Is that right? That's exactly for, right. And for money that we borrowed to pay unemployment, unemployment. compensation. But, thank you. Now, it's cheaper. You and the legislature say to use bonds to pay that debt off. Explain that. Think about refinancing your mortgage. 
Okay. And that's really what this is. Uh, we have that debt, and that debt is based upon a variable rate, and it can go up and down according to the markets, just like interest rates go on, on any uh, uh, mortgage if you have a variable mortgage. We are going in, we believe we can get one at a fairly reduced price uh, that is a fixed rate. Uh, and we're going to you know, take the money that we borrow, pay the federal government back, and then what we will be paying off is the bond okay. at a rate of whatever the percentage is. It will be fixed at that level. It will be, it'll be lower than what we're already paying uh, right now. We, and it's low enough that we didn't think that a, a, a variable rate would ever get below that mm -hmm. at this point in time. And we can start paying okay. off. We're saving. The, now, the legislature has to do this? Well, they already, they did. already did. They already that's did. That's what they, I thought. They, they, yeah, well, yes. Thought. Well, first off, they had to pass the law. law. Now we have to go do the bonds. Do the bonds. Right. And was that vote? And that has to be done uh, bipartisan. Uh, pretty, pretty much on bipartisan. The, uh, on, yes. Yeah. Uh, I thought it would yeah, be. It pretty, be. Pretty much. I mean, you know, more Republicans I think voted yeah. for than, than Democrats, but you know, uh, it has to be paid. Secretary it, Hathaway, uh, or, excuse me, yeah, Julia, yeah. Uh, went out there and uh, worked it with the labor mm -hmm. unions, with the business okay. entities, worked them very hard, worked the legislature. Yeah, I didn't hear any controversy about no, it. That's it, the it, point. It, she did a massive job. Now employers job. now will be exempt from paying that into the fund for their employees and that and you argue that's been do I got that quite right is it, that it, a dis it, it, you're, it's, yeah, you get, you're getting into the weeds here okay. of how many quarters and, and what the price ah, of the quarters right. is and everything like that but the point is that now if I get if I got this right that private sector employers now pay for each employee since 2009 when the fund was depleted that will not happen now and 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 that should be an incentive for employees right. to hire because they don't have to pay. That, that's the whole idea company. is to give the got give the businesses the opportunity to spend yeah. money and go out and hire more people. All right, let's. I want to talk about two or three other subjects before I let you go. I want to talk about prison reform. It's a subject I know near and dear to your heart as a former attorney general and U.S. attorney. I've always maintained, Governor, we put too many people. For, on drug-related charges, just for possession, lots of them drug addicts, behind bars for long periods of time. It's too costly. They're not getting rehabilitated. You all have been talking about that and working on a package, right? Talk, say, talk well, a little well, bit about we that. We are. I mean, the, the, the cost of keeping a prisoner continues to rise. 33,000. Something, something in that neighborhood. When I was uh, chairman of the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency under Tom Ridge back in the, in the mid-'90s, I think we were talking about a jail population, a prison population, of about 23,000, 24,000. It's doubled now. So we, we built jails, continued our prisons, we continue to build them. We, we stopped that this year. Uh, I mean, last year we didn't build a prison in Fayette County. Uh, this year we have flatlined the, the uh, corrections portion of the budget. We're going to live within mm -hmm. our means on that. Well, in order to do that, uh, we need to have some reforms of how we do it. Yeah. For instance, f we have found that if we change the parole system, not letting people uh, out that, sh that, that shouldn't be uh, out, but those who have already a decision has been made and then they sit in the prison for two or three months yeah. while we're trying to get while a, a program get for them, yeah. we need yeah. to speed that up. So yeah. that comes down to efficiencies. I think it's kind of interesting that the former, you know, prosecutor uh, is the one who's leading the, the uh, well, prison reform, I but, I but it's because I know that it's it, absolutely necessary, and there's a large group of people, bipartisan, as I you know, so. yeah. former governor leader, who right. he and I have become friends, right. uh, is heavily involved in doing some of this. We're, t we're taking some of their recommendations. The legislature gets it. It's very important that we get it done. All right, we're going to run to a break. Last segment with Governor Corbett coming up. Good. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by... Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Hey, welcome back with Governor Corbett. Well, Governor, we, we've exhausted a, a boatload of topics here. I do want to talk to you about one other thing. And, other governors have tried to do this. They haven't been successful. It, we, it's called school choice or vouchers. Now, I noticed lately you saying, don't call them vouchers. We're, and you have some other ideas that you want to push about school reform. What, what are they? Well, there are a number of ideas. One, I'd like to see teacher evaluation get through because right now mm -hmm. teachers are... Uh, 
graded satisfactory, unsatisfactory, and the rate of satisfactory teachers in Pennsylvania is 99.1 percent. You want more specificity? We need more specificity. We need to be able to deal with mm -hmm. that. Two, uh, there, there's discussions in the legislature right now about charter reform, about the funding of, of charters, mm -hmm. about a uh, statewide authorizer for charters, uh, right. direct pay from the state to the to the charter. There's discussions there. Right. Uh, the amount of uh, money spent uh, in cyber charters is, is being discussed mm -hmm. <coughs> as to whether they need the same amount as a charter school right. uh, actually needs. So those, those are the discussions. Uh, the earned income tax uh, or, or the education income tax uh, credit, uh, that's being discussed as, uh, as we speak. And you know, today is different than when this is going to air. So, so there could be not, a great deal so of your, movement on so this. So your point would be that if vouchers are tough to get through and they don't poll well and you've got conservative Republican lawmakers who have trouble with it because they don't have any place their kids can, in their schools can use vouchers. So it's not just been, you know, teachers unions and others who've opposed it historically. You know, Governor Ridge tried it twice, Governor Thornburg, I think, once. It, it, there is a problem with the use of... So your point, is your point now, there are other things that... We, why there, get there, caught up there, in that there debate are, there are while other, we have other things? Other, there are other, other tools out there. Mm -hmm. I know we spend, if you count federal, state, and local monies, mm -hmm. coming to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, for education, K through 12 and higher ed, over 26 billion dollars. Right. When I look at that, I see successes. I see a lot of failures. We have to figure out how to spend that money more effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, and spending some of that mon money on the private side, whether they be charters, whether they be uh, education income yeah. tax credits, if you want to use the term voucher, use the term voucher. That seems to be a, a red flag. But m public money going to education is important. Right. We need to improve our education system. Okay, we have about a minute left, and I just want to conclude. Now, as we discuss, you're in the middle of these discussions on the budget. Uh, close, far, we get... Uh, By you, the time you this may, airs, we might yeah, be done. Know. Who knows? Yeah, well, you sh yeah, hopefully you will be, but you say close. They may, the legislators may say far or, or vice versa. In the governor of the Commonwealth's opinion, how, are you close? Um, as we speak today, we're coming close to what the amount of money is we're both willing to spend. Yeah, that's about I'm not as high as they are. They're not as low yeah, as I am. Yeah. Once you establish that, then it's how does that money get divided? I get it. I get it. But, but you can't be too far off if that's what you're arguing about. i got to get out of here. Governor, thanks for coming Thank on the you. program. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, stay well.